Sunday Night Cramming with Mathav. Tonight's episode, Nuclear and Space Race. This is what happens when nationalism controls their countries. In 1947 started a weirdly peculiar war for the ages to come, the Cold War. It is so-called cold due to the fact that no actual wars were ever fought, instead the US and the Soviet Union avoided the topic like children being confronted about the birds and the bees, desperately looking for ways to avoid any kind of real conflict. This caused both sides to develop rivalries in every other aspect. Thus, the space race and the nuclear race were born. In October 4th, 1957, 7.28 p.m., Russia launched Sputnik 1, making history as the first man-made object put in a consistent elliptical orbit around the Earth, and thus marked the start of the space race. This was followed by Sputnik 2, that fun fact carried the first space traveler, Laika the dog, who unfortunately perished during the trip. In response to Sputnik 1 and 2, the United States, threatened by the Soviets' advantage, launched the Vanguard test satellite in December 1957. Whereas the Sputnik launches were a great success, the televised Vanguard launch was a spectacular failure, leading to newspaper headlines such as Flotnik and Kaputnik. Yes, this was an elementary school playground arms race. The U.S. Navy's Vanguard rocket failed when the launch vehicle burst, landing a miserable distance while still sending out its radio signal. According to the Institute of Historical Research at the University of London, it would seem that the Americans were beaten because they were so preoccupied with the presentation of their satellite launch. The prestige and propaganda aspect was considered so important that they were delayed because they wanted a satellite that contained a scientific experiment in order to prove its ostensible scientific purpose. AKA, they needed a scientific excuse to launch the satellite so as to not seem like the only reason would be to beat the Soviet Union. However, the Americans were still frightened about the Soviets being more powerful than them space-wise, even though launching Vanguard 1 later in March 1958 was successful. Consequently, President Eisenhower created NASA, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, which was granted control of all non-military activity in space. The United States then strived to be the first to reach the moon, controlling the Vanguard program and launching Project Mercury from 1959 to 1963, designed to see if men could be put into orbit and survive in space for a longer period of time. Funnily enough, the Soviets kicked the collective American butts again, by sending Yuri Gagarin in the Vostok program as the first man to orbit the Earth in April 1961. In fact, Russia then sent another man, Grimin Titov, to space. As he passed over America, he broadcast a hello message to the American people, who would not send a man into space until the following year. Indeed, Later in February 1962, John Glenn was the first American who entered Earth's orbit. Project Gemini followed, initially as an extension of Mercury, intending to further observe and study techniques for more advanced space travel. Gemini made two things possible, longer space flights and two vehicles meeting and docking in space. Then Project Apollo happened, and Neil Armstrong got to the moon, and America won the race. Because... Merka. On August 29, 1949, the Soviet Union exploded its first atomic bomb, which was a great shock to the United States because they were not expecting the Soviet Union to possess nuclear weapon knowledge so soon, which ensued in both US and USSR pumping billions of dollars into building nuclear stockpiles to ensure supremacy. The Soviets made the Americans look like losers, even with their piles of nuclear bombs. But then President Truman allowed the development of bombs that could yield 10 megaton explosions, hydrogen bombs, aka the nuclear superweapon. The Americans then held a lead over the Soviets as they spent an average of 35 billion per year on their nuclear weapons program during the Cold War. 
Unfortunately, the Soviets crushed their lead again by launching the first artificial satellite, aka Sputnik 1, on October 1957, as mentioned previously. To compete with the stockpile of U.S. nuclear weapons, the USSR created the Tsar Bomba, the most powerful nuclear weapon ever created. It was tested on October 30th, 1961, weighing 57 megatons. Increasing their stockpile apparently proved dominance and kept themselves secure if a nuclear war were to break out. Fortunately, due to MAD, or Mutual Assured Destruction, the US and USSR did not use their nuclear weapons on each other and destroyed the entire world in the process. Over the years, since the end of the Cold War in 1991, their stockpiles have reduced due to acts like nuclear disarmament. The nuclear arms race finally began descending to its end when in December 1987, Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev and US President Reagan signed the first arms accord accepted by both Moscow and Washington that called for the elimination of an entire class of weapons, intermediate range missiles, according to Peter Curran for the educational website Adam Central. The Cold War after discussing both the arms and the space race and their effects on each nation, I believe it's time to question whether they, and consequently the Cold War, had more benefits or drawbacks for humanity. Of course, the races had their benefits in their own specific country, but they did also cause a lot of chaos for humanity as a whole. Considering the nuclear race and the space race, the nuclear race was more devastating. The nuclear war led to the United States and the Soviet Union constantly bickering over who would be the first to do anything, resembling elementary school fights, and those fights were influenced by nationalism, therefore entire generations turned into haters of the opposing country. It was not as simple as trying to stop their fights because both countries were also afraid of the power the other had in terms of weapons. That was one of the reasons why children and teenagers and anyone lived in constant fear of being bombed. That reality is not far from other places. Syria, Palestine, Israel, among other Middle Eastern countries are still living with war. Innocent people live in constant fear of bombing. North Korea is a formidable threat since they have many bombs that could hypothetically destroy the Earth. For several years, North Korea has claimed to be building a nuclear missile which is able to attack the US though they claim they won't use weapons unless they are threatened. The world also has ISIS who are hard to stop as they operate globally and have taken over multiple territories. ISIS, unlike most governments, do not abide to regulations. They also use social media to brainwash people who then go on a killing spree in the name of ISIS. However, taking into consideration the bad effects, there have been many good effects of the nuclear arms race. It has led to a stronger enforcement of regulations that limit and secure the nuclear weapons to ensure safety and rational defense. Therefore, it might have created chaos, but it has also shaped a way for a safer future. The space race, on the other hand, has had a lot of benefits but without much chaos like in the nuclear race. It has contributed to greater space exploration nowadays, with more people spending billions of dollars on the cause and building more facilities for this purpose. For example, better and more satellites not only for space, but also for broadcasting, weather, and radio signals. Search for microbial life in space, the exploration of stars and other planets, and photographs in space for topography and weather are all developments that arose since the space race. This also led to many technological advances, like satellite TVs, laptops, smoke detectors, 3D graphics, among others. All these technological advances arose from the early forms that were used for space exploration. The space race expanded our curiosities and technology. Ultimately, it led to the funding of space research and also to the rise of space exploration as we know it today. Therefore, after considering the effects of the nuclear and space race, it is evident that overall the Cold War had more benefits than drawbacks for humanity. I would have so much saliva in my mouth. I know. Okay. 
However, the Americans were still frightened about the Soviets being more powerful. Blech. However, <laughs> powerful. Oh. ISIS, unlike most governments, did not abide to regular regulations. Regular regulations? Three. Intending to further observe and study techniques for more advanced state. Oh, blah. Why can't I read? Project. Project. Project Gemini. Project Gemini followed. Then Project Apollo happened, and Neil Armstrong got to the moon, and America won the race. Because. Merka. Yeah.